trying to tell you to be decent. Just decent. When you come to worship, you can fall down, you can roll, you can, you can feel comfortable when you are worshiping God. Amen. Lift Jesus up and he will solve our problems. Our challenges will be dealt with. Our issues will be dealt with by the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Just want to give you one example. A very, uh, um, uh, my, I consider it a very good example. Where somebody found an opportunity to lift the name of the Lord up. And I want us to take it well. Because it's not bad, it's a good example. So we learn from it. We learn or now not miss opportunity of lifting Jesus up. Opportunities of lifting Jesus up. And this I find it in Daniel chapter 2, verse 24. I'll read you in Daniel chapter 2, verse 24 to 29. The Bible says, Then Daniel went in to see Harioch. Whom the king, this is NLT, NLT, whom the king had ordered to execute the wise men of Babylon. Daniel said to him, don't kill the wise men. Take me to the king and I will tell him the meaning of his dream. Verse 25. Ariok quickly took Daniel to the king and said, I have found one of the captives from Judah who will tell the king the meaning of his dream. The king said to Daniel, also known as Belteshazzar, Is this true? Can you tell me what my dream was and what it means? Daniel replied, There are no wise men, enchanters, magicians, or fortune tellers who can reveal the king's secrets, secret. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. There is no what? No wise man. No, nothing. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. And he has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in the future. Now I tell you your dream. And these visions you saw as you lay on your bed. While your majesty you are sleeping, you dreamt about coming events. He will reveal secrets and show you what is going to happen. Verse 30, I love it. And it is not because I am wiser than anyone else that I know the secrets of your dream. But because God wants you to understand what was in your heart. Hallelujah. Daniel, I think you remember this time that the king, in chapter 2, it begins by the king, Nebuchadnezzar, and dreamed and dreamed. And he forgot. So when he woke up, he was disturbed because the dream was very disturbing. He forgot the dream. And he didn't know the dream and he didn't know the interpretation. So he caused magicians and astrologers and the, the ones NLT is calling enchanters. People who chant, they are called the, those who chant. <laughs> the, yeah, those who do those things. He called all of them to come and tell him the dream first and then interpret. I'm telling you, there was nobody who could do it. And he wanted them. I'm going to kill all of you because you are sleeping on your job. You should be able to tell me my dream. You know, some of these guys were tough. Because why do you dream and you forget? Then you want somebody to tell you, to remind you the dream. It is even better that you tell me the dream. Then I tell you what I think the interpretation is. But in dreams, and he says, I've forgotten even the dream. But you must tell me, otherwise you die. And the guys who are going to die. But then when Daniel realize these things are tough and we are part of the wise men in this country of bondage of captivity we will also die together so he said give us some days we pray and he went and consulted his other guys Chendrak, Meshach and Abednego they went into prayer they prayed and in the midst of prayer 
the Lord revealed secrets of the king to Daniel. Hallelujah. Then he goes and tells this guy who is in charge of the process, please don't kill these people. Take me to the king and I will be able to tell him the dream and interpret the dream for him. This is where we are coming from. Now, what we have read, and this is important for me, Daniel decided not to take the glory. He decided not to say, I am a very wise person. I know so much. That is why I can tell you your dream. You know? And the king was saying, you mean you are wise, you can tell me my dream? He says, no, there is nobody wise. The enchanters and the astrologers and all these people are not wise, including myself. I am not wise. Hallelujah. Can you imagine? Daniel gets an opportunity. He professor, you got that opportunity. He says, yes, yes. You know, I have a PhD, you know. And I am the one, you see. Yes. But this boy, this young man said, no. I want to give glory to God. I want to lift this name before the heathen people here. I want people to know there is a God in heaven who sees the secrets of men, who knows the secrets of men, who keeps us alive. There is a God in heaven. Hallelujah. You know, I love this. He never said, I am the one. I'm telling you, there are people who, 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 who move up and, uh, you know, um, you know, walk around and say, yes, king, I am. I am wise. I'm from Babylon, the tribe of Judah. I am powerful. I can interpret these things. Daniel never said that. He said, no, I am not. But there is a God in heaven that is lifting the name of the Lord, giving him his position. Hallelujah. Giving him his position before the people and telling those sinners that you need to believe in this God. You know it is a choice. When you lift Jesus up high, people make choices where they want to be. Do you want to believe in this or you want to believe in this other one? Even in the wilderness, most old people choose where you want to be, where you want to belong. You can't be in the two sides. You either belong to God or you belong to this other side. Choose. So, he saw an opportunity to tell the king. And let me tell us, you know, last Sunday I was so much pressurized, pressurizing. I'm telling you, everywhere you go, live like a child of God. Tell people about Jesus. It is the same story. But I want you not to go to extreme where you go and harass your boss. You know, there are some of us who take these things serious. I was told when I'm on the pulpit, whatever I say, people take it serious. So I don't want you to rush there and tell your boss, you know, I'm born again. Your boss will be shocked first. Daniel never rushed and told Nebuchadnezzar, I'm born again. An opportunity came. Hallelujah. An opportunity came and he said, they are going to know Jesus now. They are going to, go to know God now. So an opportunity should prevail in your office. As you move around, as you walk around with your boss, an opportunity will come. And that opportunity, when it comes, don't miss it. Push the name of Jesus. Push the name of God. Push your faith there. An opportunity came. The king has nobody to interpret and dream. It is an opportunity that has come. And Daniel knew an opportunity has come. And instead of praising himself and saying, I can do it, Daniel said, I am not even wise myself. But there is a God in heaven. Hallelujah. That is lifting the name of the Lord. And that is what he's seeking for. Not for you to say you are the brightest person. By the way, some of, you know, it's good to be bright. I'm happy when people are bright. I'm happy when people call S, straight S. It's good. But be careful. Those straight S can change your thinking, can change your attitude. If you are not like Daniel, who was blessed by God, by knowing how to interpret dreams. And that's the same with the ministry, Pastor Joshua. 
When you begin to lay hands and people are falling down and demons are running away, we begin to change our thinking and our attitude. We forget to lift the name of the Lord. Every opportunity you get, lift the name of the Lord. If there is a promotion in the office and God has identified you to be promoted, don't begin to see other things. See God has promoted you. Hallelujah. And say, the way Elder Mamba says, it is by grace of God. It is by his grace. Mwamba will never open his mouth without the grace of God. He has known who does all these things for him. It is by his grace. It is by his grace. Hallelujah. That is how you lift the name of the Lord up. And Daniel, to me, is an excellent example of how to lift the name of the Lord up. Not taking his glory. God does not share glory with anybody. Nothing. If he shows you something to do, you don't become you as of other one. It is God that you lift up. Hallelujah. I, I, I love that. When I saw this, somebody told us that there are no revelations. They are all in the Bible. There is nothing new. Or the rebe it's the illumination. So when the Lord illuminated to me <laughs> this, I was excited. To know that this fellow should have said, yes, king, I am here, I'm Daniel. Yes, I know it. I am a prophet. <laughs> I'm an apostle, you know. But he never said those things. He said there is nobody who is wise, king. Nobody. But there is a God in heaven. An opportunity of lifting the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. If an opportunity comes in your school, in your office, in everywhere, where you are not easily able to reach the managing director. You are not able is to walk and tell your boss things. An opportunity will come and God will provide it. Don't miss it. Lift the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when they give you that certificate, you are the best performer in the office this year. As you lift it up, you tell your boss, it is by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Yes, you will know there is something this person knows. Yes, that is how we lift the name of the Lord. And let's not forget, hallelujah. God never shares glory with anyone. So never take his glory. When he opens your eyes to see, glorify his name. Lift his, his name up high and the things will be different. Buana as if you were sana. Yes, I will give you a consequence, just one consequence of failing to lift his name. There are many, there are many things in the Bible that can tell you, can show you. When your opportunities come and you fail to lift the name of the Lord, some things can happen in your life. It can be challenging, yeah? It can be challenging in your life. You've gotten the opportunity it could even be for your promotion. By the way, when Daniel did this, si alipewa mandraka, ali, ali, ali pandishwa cheo, sindio? If the man was blessed, he was lifted up. And that is why, because of lifting the name of the Lord in the heathen land, which never believed in God, Daniel was able to serve four regimes. I have said this many times. Four regimes without being sacked. I think you know how people are sacked in Kenya. Without being sacked, he served the regime of Nebuchadnezzar, he served the regime of Beos, he served the regime of, 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 of Darius, and the regime of Cyrus. Four kings, and all from different tribes and different things. And they're in captivity also. Belshazzar who was the son of Nebuchadnezzar, they were all the Chaldeans, from the Chaldeans. Uh, Darius was what? Darius, no, he was not a Persian. Cyrus was a Persian, and Darius was a Med Median. He was a Mende. <laughs> he was a Mendes. He was a Media. <laughs> so all these guys from different tribes, they would come and they would still like Daniel. It is like today. 
you should not be surviving because the guy on top is, your, is from your tribe. You should be surviving and working comfortably in your office from any, not caring who is there. For me, I don't care who comes to power. And I am here proudly saying, all oh, what has happened in my life, since I got born again, and I went to school, my father paid school fees, my brothers paid my college fee, nobody from my tribe pushed me up in the office. I'm not, proud, I'm just not being proud. I'm just telling you, you can prosper without your tribesman there. You can prosper. You can prosper. Sometimes even those tribesmen want to bring you down. They don't want you to go up. They want to be the star in the village. They don't want you to look like you're overtaking them. So just work for God. Lift the name of the Lord and you will get what you need to get. Amen. Hallelujah. I know some of you don't agree in some of these things. They say, I must know somebody. Must know somebody. I'm telling you, you can be promoted without knowing somebody. Amen. I was employed by the Central Bureau of Statistics. Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. As a statistician, or stat they call them statistical officer, two. So that was go job group hunger, job group H. Unaanza nanja hapo. Nangangana nanja. Then from there you become a statistical officer too. You go to job group J. Yeah? Njambu. But God is great. I never went to, I never jumped to J. Actually, I did skip a jump. I went to L. Simply because I went back to college and got an, another postgraduate degree. They took me and paid for it. My relatives, other people who I, some of them are Luos, Kikuyus. And this is no, I want to tell you tribalism will take us nowhere. 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 So from college, went to, to L. You to say you have moved from Roma, Omenda, all the way to, to, <laughs> to, to Lovington. You have been pushed all the way to Lovington. The distance is very long because it's difficult to come out of H to L. Difficult. Those who are in the civil service know that. So when you jump from H to L to Lovington, it's a long distance. Hallelujah. With no relatives. With people from different tribes. Lift up the name of the Lord. And every, all the battles will be won for you. Hallelujah. Will be done for you. By lifting the name of the Lord. So tribalism is not anything. And that's why I like this man called Daniel. He never survived through, polit, through, through tribe, tribesmen. And he never stopped worshipping God. He never stopped prayer. He would pray three times. And he was not praying, hiding. He was showing them, I pray facing Jerusalem. Three times. I'm telling you, that man was special. Let me quickly, and maybe the last one, to try and um, tell, you, tell you another man who made a mistake. An opportunity came. He made a mistake. And he did not lift the name of the Lord in that condition. And it was disastrous. And it can be a good example for us where we are working. So that we know when an opportunity comes of lifting the Lord, we do it. We do it. Hallelujah. Let's look at Numbers chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20, verse 7 to 12 says, I think this is King James Version. And the Lord spoke, yeah, this is King James Version, and the Lord sp spoke unto Moses, saying, Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth its water. 
and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod before, from before the Lord as he commanded him. Verse 10. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And all he said unto them, Hear me, ye, hear now, ye rebels. <laughs> you hear where, how he has started? He's so annoyed. He says, Hear, ye, you rebels. Must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice. He hit the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly. And the congregation drank and their beasts also. Verse 12. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron. said, because ye believed me not, to sanctify me in the high eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Why didn't God forgive Moses, surely? This is a man he was talking to. Moving around with the people who are very difficult to manage. Do you know human beings are tough? Have you managed some of them? And no, they are not easy. Now, Moses was managing a whole population, a whole nation. Twelve tribes of Israel. It was hard, difficult. Every small thing that they lacked, they all went back to him and reminded him about Egypt. It's like some people who keep reminding you of some things that, that you forgot a long time ago. And they always keep reminding you. Why don't you behave like so and so? You know, you are now married and you are trying to survive and pushing hard. There's no money. You are in job of hunger. You are struggling with the life. And then you have a nagging wife who keeps telling you, why don't you buy a car like so and so? <laughs> Professor, how would you feel? <laughs> why, don't, why don't you, why is it that you are, you know, why are you not promoted? Why? Why did you go to school? Which degree did you get, by the way? When, which university were you? Eh? Ulienda university gani? I'm telling you, that is tough. So every time there is a small problem, Moses, why did you take us out of Egypt? Where we were eating melons, garlics, iliki, <laughs> where there were tomatoes, where there were all those beautiful things, onions, imagine. Even when they were on the, on, the, on the Red Sea before they crossed, and then they saw those guys coming, they said, were well, there are no graves in Egypt? You know, you know those kind of talk? I know some men, even those who are born again, they slap their wives. Because of those questions. Uh, never slap your wife. By the way, when you are slapped, come and tell me. I will deal with your husband. You should never slap your wife. If you feel annoyed, just walk away, go to, the, to town and come back in the evening. But don't sleep outside. Come back to the house. If you are annoyed. But it's annoying. Somebody beginning to tell you, wewe kazi yako ni nini hapa kwa nyumba? Why don't, you, why don't you remind people good things? You're always talking about Egypt. 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 We left Egypt. We talk. Did, he, did I force you to come out of Egypt? You are crying all the time, praying for God to remove you from Egypt. Now we are in the wilderness. And you keep looking at me. I say, why were there no graves 
you know that thing is painful. So they came into the wilderness and they have no water. They turn into Moses. You guy, what is your... Kwani, you know, eh? you brought us as here to die. We have no water. Our animals have no water. You know, they complained. Then you know Moses goes to God with Aaron. Then God tells him what to do. Go and speak to the, to the rock. Go and do what? Speak. God needed something out of the speaking. It's not just about anything. But God needed something out of the speaking. But when Moses arrived there, he was full of range. Annoyed, disappointed. And that's why as men, we should actually control our anger. Is it called anger? Uh, we, we, sisters, let's control our anger. Don't say, I am a kisi, uko kwetu. I am a meru from Tiganian. Don't talk, those things are useless. You are born again. You are being delivered. Sisi ni wakalenjini, we are warriors. No, you are not a warrior. You are delivered. Sisi ni wakamba tunanjua uchawi maaliko. You are delivered. Hakuna uchawi. You are delivered. Don't talk about those things here. Hallelujah. It is about lifting the name of the Lord. And he solves our problem. Even if you are surrounded by witches all over. Lift the name of Jesus. He will deal with the witches. Yesterday we were learning we should not kill the witches. We should kill the power behind the witches. And the witches will be human beings. They will walk out and say, oh. I didn't know why I was doing these things. It is another power. But as it's just by fire, you are killing by fire. <laughs> Direct the fire to the right thing. Hallelujah. Amen. I know some people will not be happy. They will say, this man is not, he's not an intercessor. He doesn't know how to remove demons. Oh, my friend. Hallelujah. Amen. So it is not about how you feel. My time is almost up. It's not about how you feel, my brother. It is not about range. Range can cause you to miss a lot of things. That anger that you keep and keep saying my people are like this. No. You have been washed by the blood of Jesus. Your people are not like that. We are Luos. We worship, we used to worship like nothing. Forget about that neck. What do you call it? Omiri. Forget about Omiri. It can't control Omiri. Yes. Let's lift the name of the Lord. And Omiri will die. In our lives we will die. Witchcraft will die. In our by the way, I'm born from Kitui. And not just Kitui, Kitui North. Yes. A place called Miguan. And when you're in Kitui Central, they say, I wish you could have guys of Mwingi. And I'm from Mwingi. They even say, you buy it in the, soup, in the market. You can find witchcraft in the market. I've been born there. And I life. I care less about craft. Don't think about you are from Meru, you are from Nyeri, you are from where? I hear Nyeri women, Nyeri men. They know how to Nyeri men. You don't have to be from Nyeri and you know that can't work. We need to lift the name of the Lord. These funny things, traditions, we will die in our lives. And we will be indifferent. Moses, go away. Face the stone. He say, you people, you are rebels. <laughs> Must I always been giving you water? And he forgot he was told to speak to the stone, to the rock. He struck it twice. But God did not want to embarrass him. The water still came. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Pastor Jay, God covers us. Even when we make mistakes. He doesn't want to embarrass his, his people, his servants. He still delivers you. Even if I make mistakes, I'm praying over you. 
and they say funny things which are not even in the Bible. God, because I've mentioned the name of the Lord, he will do something. He doesn't want to embarrass the man of God or the woman of God. He will still do something. Here he should have stopped bringing water because in the Gongwa Ville he had not given instructions. But he still gave them water. Amen. That he told Moses, he didn't tell him in public. And that's why you should not attack a man of God or a woman of God in the public. You should never embarrass a man of God in the public. You should always honor men and women of God. I'm not campaigning for myself, but I tell you, this is how it is. God called him Moses because you did not glorify me and sanctify me before the people. You will not even take these people to the promised land. He was not given a small punishment where you are told, from now in the next three days, you will not do this, you will not do that. He was told, ultimately, you will not go to Canaan. You won't. Together with your, your, with your brother, Aaron. And you know, you know this other girl called Miriam? Had messed a bit before. That one died before all of them. As they kept going around in the wilderness, Aaron died. As they went and they were about to cross over, God honored Moses. I said, you have been my servant. Come, I show you where you are supposed to take the people. By the this is something very difficult. I wouldn't want to be told, that is where <laughs> you are supposed to reach. Wamekilaimulima <laughs> maudinembo. And then God tells him, by the way, that is where you are taking those people. But you will not. You will die here. And then Joshua. God appointed Joshua to take those people there. Brethren, this can happen to us if we don't lift the name of the Lord up. God wanted people to know. You, you don't have to do maneuvers and jumping and rolling down on the ground and on the road for things to happen. You can walk to the stone and speak to the stone. Bring water. And water comes. God wanted people to know, I am all powerful. I can actually, I can just do some miracle you have never seen in your life. You can go and take the rock. Rock. Give these people water. And water will come. And then you have glorified God. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why God wants when we have miracles. We don't do maneuvers. We just do miracles and they happen. We don't go and advertise ourselves in the cameras that I healed them. Jesus would heal people and tell them, don't tell anybody. Do you know those stories in the Bible? Yes. I have to bring the cameras. Come. Come and see. Faith is now being delivered. <laughs> Everybody is looking at the camera. Look, look, a miracle is coming. A miracle. You are not a miracle maker. There is a miracle maker in heaven. You have taken that position. It is his name, you know. Moses went and struck the stone instead of speaking to the stone. And there was calamity thereafter. He had to die and not reach the promised land. I don't want us not to reach the promised land. You should be able to walk all through to the promised land. You cannot struggle and do all these things that we have done and you don't reach the promised land. Are we together? Yes. Hallelujah. Are you being blessed? Yes. Amen. Amen. It's good to know that. That Moses did not lift the name of the Lord and he had the opportunity to show the people we have a mighty God who can give you water from the stone. You know the water was coming from the stone. Bare stone in the wilderness. God wanted his glory that time. We can't share his glory. He went and messed it up and that was the end of the, of the whole story. So God wants us to glorify him. Lift him up, and we should not even shy away when that time comes. We shouldn't shy away. I want to finish 
with the a scripture here which is in Mark chapter 8 verse 38 which says whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his father of his holy angels of his father with his holy angels <clears throat> Just I don't want to emphasize much, I will continue next Sunday. But I want us to know that every time God gives us an assignment to glorify him, if we shy away from glorifying God, God will also be shy on our side when the time comes. So we should always glorify God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look for the opportunity to lift the name of the Lord. And it's going to be a blessing to you. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you. We thank your name. We glorify your name because you are a God. That cares for us. A God that knows us. A God that feels for us. Jesus became a man. And therefore, he went through the challenges of life like us. And he feels what we feel. And therefore, when we lift in God and the name of Jesus up, he recognizes the challenges that he went through on earth and he comes down and ministers to us. Therefore, Father, I pray that God, you keep reminding us that we should not behave the way Moses behaved. Moses did many great things and is a great man. But just one mistake like this, that was the end of his journey to the promised land. We don't want to do those mistakes. We don't want to take your glory. We don't want to shout at people. We don't want to have to, to, to keep uh, getting annoyed and uh, taken over by range and doing things that are not the right things. Father, help us to live lives that lift up your name. Mo jo Daniel gave us how not to take God's glory, but to let his glory be seen by everybody. He never said he is the wise man. He said there is no wise man but God in heaven who reveals the secrets of men. Father, we pray that we will be able to acknowledge God as our Father, God as our miracle one, God as everything in our lives. Let's lift him up high and he shall do things for us. We thank you, Father, we bless you. I bless this congregation for listening. I pray, King of glory, that they will not forget those that they have had today. They will apply them in their lives, and their lives will be transformed in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, we bless you. Amen. God bless you. Bless you, God bless you. Hallelujah. We thank God so much for the great word that um, has come to us, the word of God that changes our lives, that transforms us. And it's my prayer that um, even as we go home, we keep meditating upon it, doing things differently, lifting the name of the Lord all the time, whenever we walk, whenever we are in offices, in businesses, even for the glory of God. Amen.